One of the most difficult Christian doctrines for those who aren't Christian is the incarnation. The idea is that the creator God embedded himself in humanity in a human body for 33 years in Jesus' life. It is beyond incredible. But that's precisely what the Bible teaches. And, and one of the clearest passages is John 1 verse 14. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. It's clear. It's what the Bible teaches. Verse 18 goes on. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. It's not only teaching that God came in the flesh, but in order for you to know God, you have to know God through Jesus, the incarnate God. Now, that's an exclusive claim. In our culture, we tend to shy away from exclusive claims. So not only is it a difficult doctrine, it's difficult to communicate without sounding intolerant. But let me, let me turn the question around. We've been asking, is Jesus God? Is Jesus God? What if we asked, is God Jesus? In, in other words, are there things that we believe about God because we have seen Jesus? I'm going to suggest three. And not only do we know three things about God that no one has ever guessed without seeing Jesus, historically speaking, that's just a fact, but these are the most important things for us to know about God. Number one, God is near. No one would have ever guessed that without Jesus. Certainly no religion has guessed that. Now, there are some religions that portray God as near. But anytime God is near to humanity, he is nameless and faceless. He becomes the God of the inanimate rocks and trees and rivers. He's the God of the wind or the God of the sun. But as soon as religion starts naming their God, uh, Yahweh or Odin or uh, Allah, that God becomes very distant from us. He's inaccessible to us. It is only in Jesus that God is both personal and near, and that's important. Number two, God suffers. Now, again, no religion has guessed this because the gods are above the human fray by and large. But when we talk about real suffering, it really gets real in Jesus. Hands and feet pinned to a tree. This kind of suffering opens up a, an immense avenue for understanding God. And you actually see it in the Old Testament. Glimpses. Zechariah 12, 10. That he, he is, has been pierced. Or Isaiah 53, he's like a lamb led to the slaughter. The Jewish rabbis had great difficulty with these passages precisely because they could not imagine God suffering. But here's where it gets really inspirational to me. You know why God suffers? He suffers for you. And he suffers for me. Put it this way, the God of the universe became vulnerable to our love. And that is important. So God is near, God suffers, and God loves. Now, I know that's fairly common among religious teachings of various gods. The gods love those who like them, or God loves those who become like them. But before we were like God, and before we liked God, in fact, while we were enemies of God, God loved us. In the person of Jesus Christ, first words on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is a whole different level of love. And it is only applied to God because people have seen Jesus Christ. These three are immensely important concepts. And I don't think we would truly know God had we not seen Jesus model these three things, that he's near, that he loves, that he suffers. But it's more important than just a theological tenet. It's not just an abstract idea. Listen, the incarnation is not merely a doctrine. It is the methodology for living life. It's not what, just what Jesus did for us. It's what he modeled for us to do for others. And if you want to be a good leader, a good coach, a good father, 
these three attributes that are manifest in Jesus Christ are the same attributes that will make you a good father, that you're near, that you sacrifice, and that you love the other even when they're unlovely. It will make you a better husband, a better boss, a better coach. The incarnation is not just a doctrine. It's a way of life.